know what Henry VIII said to his third wife? Don't worry, it will be brief. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Chaim Shaked. I come originally from uh, Israel, where I was for many years a professor at Tel Aviv University. And for the past two decades or so, I've been spending my time in the United States, in Miami, where I developed a center for contemporary Judaic studies. To the best of my knowledge, there are only two centers in the world which have the word contemporary embedded in them. One is in Jerusalem, Amachon Le'yadud Zmanenu, and one is in uh, Miami. I have to start with a very brief confession. M my academic field is very remote from anything that has to do with Judaic studies or the Holocaust. My field is Islamic studies. But in the past uh, decade or so, I found myself gravitating more and more towards working in the field of uh, Holocaust uh, studies and mostly post-Holocaust studies. Uh, Rabbi uh, Menachem said to me earlier today that in his old age he can do what he wants. In my old age I can do what I want. And I feel a, a, a personal obligation to my own heritage and the family that I never had because they were all murdered in Poland to, do, to devote the rest of my life to doing work that's related to the Holocaust. So I'm here uh, to share with you some information about two projects which are in development. They are just in the beginning stages of development. And I was very grateful for the invitation uh, to attend this conference because I'm trying to spread the word about these projects. And anyone who is interested in uh, pursuing collaboration uh, is welcome during the conference to come and talk to me and I'll be very happy to uh, communicate more information about these two projects. The first one is an international survey concerning the teaching about the Holocaust in higher education. We know today a great deal about what's going on in teaching about the Holocaust in secondary education, in elementary uh, education. Uh, in 2016, the International uh, Holocaust Remembrance Association conducted, uh, convened an international conference in Lucerne where people from various countries reported about the teaching about the Holocaust in secondary uh, schools, and then they published a very uh, important volume uh, on this uh, subject. There are hundreds of studies and articles that deal with this matter of how to teach about the Holocaust in high schools and middle schools and elementary schools. Surprisingly, there is almost nothing about what is going on in the higher education level above the high school. So uh, my center, together with the Strochlitz Center at uh, Haifa University, headed by Professor uh, Arye Kochavi and uh, Dr. Yael Granot, we decided to launch an international survey in order to try and find out what is happening in universities or uh, uh, seminaries for training teachers above the high school level as far as teaching the Holocaust is uh, concerned. So far, in the preliminary research that we have conducted, we found out that the United States Holocaust Museum conducted years ago a survey in the United States, but they never published it. They contacted about 2,000 universities. That was about 20 years ago. So whatever is there is by now completely uh, out of date. In Germany, a team uh, under the auspices of the Freie Universität in Berlin just 
recently published a similar study, but it's limited only to German universities and an Austrian uh, institution, which is part of the Austrian Ministry of Education, conducted about five years ago a survey of teacher training institutions and what is happening there. That is all we know about what is happening worldwide uh, uh, concerning uh, this uh, subject matter. So our objectives with this survey are number one, to collect the information, to find out what is happening, what is not happening, uh, uh, and to get a kind of a map of what is going on. But that is only a part of what we are trying to accomplish because uh, we want, on the basis of that information, to develop a website which will be kind of a meeting space for professors in universities who are interested in sharing information, sharing syllabi, sharing data about what works, what doesn't work with students, and thereby to try and encourage those professors who are already teaching this subject, and there are not too many of them, and those who want to teach this subject to join forces and try and do a better job and expand the message to universities where this is not happening. So that is one uh, project, and we have already had a number of workshops. We are in the final stages of developing a detailed research proposal, and we hope that once we have that research proposal, we'll be able to uh, find in various countries partners who will want to take on their particular country and together create the international survey. The second project is in an even more preliminary uh, stage. Um, I've become very, very interested as I see the Holocaust turning very quickly from a human experience into museums and monuments and, and footnotes and abstractions. Before long, people will begin to treat the Holocaust, I mean, people, younger students will begin to treat the Holocaust more or less like we treat today the expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492. They become a total abstraction, totally impersonal, and, and a historical story. And I, I've been very interested in this transformation of this incredible uh, tragedy and, and travesty into stones, into a monument. So I started looking into this uh, subject, and I discovered that there are literally thousands of monuments all over the world. When I say all over the world, it's mostly, of course, Europe, North America, South America, uh, Australia, and, and no one knows where they are, what they are, what they mean, what, how, how have people and artists expressed in different ways the memory of the Holocaust for future uh, generations. If you go on the internet, you'll find that there is a private initiative by a, a, an immigrant from Russia who lives in the United States, his name is David Reutgard, who went to the internet and simply copied pictures from the internet and put them in one uh, place. Uh, a, an entity called Jewish Heritage Europe has a section on uh, monuments. Uh, in various gu tourist guides, there are sections about monuments, but no one has done a systematic survey and put all of this together in one place so that anyone who is interested either in studying this subject or using these monuments as an educational tool, as a pedagogical tool, can do it. The only exception being Latvia, uh, where uh, Rabbi Balkan mentioned uh, earlier today the map of Holocaust. I'm, I'm sorry, there are only two exceptions. One is Latvia, where systematic collection 
has already uh, occurred. The other one is Israel, where almost a systematic collection has been done, but it doesn't cover everything uh, that is there. So again, the uh, intention uh, of this project is eventually to create a database that will include whatever is there and will be updated whenever new material is there. And these are the two projects that I am trying to advertise by way of a commercial, as I said, if anyone is interested in additional information or in possible collaboration, you are most welcome to come and talk to me uh, uh, during the conference. I told you it would be less than 15 minutes. It's less than 15 minutes.